Hi and hello everyone and welcome to this module on a public speaking and incorporating its principles into teaching. This is an exciting topic. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, myself, Dr. Pranesh from India and uh, I thank Ophthalmology Foundation and uh, Dr. Meenakshi Swaminathan for this wonderful opportunity to meet you again. I hope you might have watched the uh, other previous two modules, uh, the why. Why does a teacher should have some understanding about public speaking and the principles or the core fundamental principles of public speaking, the message delivery aspects of it, which have been covered by Dr. Meenakshi and Dr. Kaushik Murli respectively. And uh, in this video, uh, my part will be on how can we improve as a public speaker slash teachers to be more specific, the practical aspects of it. So I'm going to give uh, the skills that we need to put these things into the right perspective. Okay. So the objectives of this talk are going to be threefold. So I'm going to give you three skills, three skills, which I want the audience to know and apply them into their teaching practice. Secondly, I want you guys to understand the three elements of oratory, which we'll discuss. Uh, oratory means public speaking. So yeah, the third is I want you guys to learn, know about a cool pro tip, which will help you to appear to look smarter on stage while you teach. So let's get started. The first skill is something called as empathy. So empathy, this is not a new skill. Probably the most often talked about, uh, you know, for any healthcare professional is going to be the quality of empathy. Not just for a doctor, not just for a nurse, even for a public speaker, empathy is crucial. So what's empathy? Putting yourself into others' perspective, putting yourself in someone else's shoes and think from their perspective. So here in our case, it's going to be understanding the audience, understanding the audience who we are trying to teach. Okay. Empathy is a very complex concept. It's like an like abstract idea, but it can be made actionable when you understand these three questions. You can empathize with your audience if you can answer these three questions or if you can expect to know these three questions before you take a class for them. The question number one is what they already know. What is their pre-existing knowledge, which is very important, but can be very tricky because you may be able to address a group of students who are of different cadres. They can be first year residents, a second year resident. They can be a third year resident or they can be a senior uh, adult ophthalmic personnel. They can be a junior. So you can have a mixed variety of people uh, from different cultural backgrounds, from, from different uh, backgrounds of knowledge. So it might be a challenge for an educator to address all of them. But the key point is, it is important to know what they already know, at least to some extent, so that our classes can be curtailed, can be personalized to their needs. So the second question is what they want to know. So when we know what they already know, we have to understand what they really want. What is their need? What is their requirement? And final question is, which is more important than what they already know and what they want to know. This question deals with how they want to know. This how depends upon you. I mean, it is where we, as a teacher, become a public speaker. It is here we exert our control and we exert our expertise of public speaking. Okay. Now let's jump start into skill number two, that is confidence. So again, confidence is like a very abstract term, but again, I will try to break confidence into actionable practical points. Now let's start with this. Why someone should lack confidence in teaching? The lack of confidence in teaching, in other words, fear of public speaking. Now let me just uh, take a moment to explain why I'm bringing public speaking into teaching? What is the philosophy behind it? See, in its purest form, teaching is a form of public speaking. Of course, you're going to speak in public. That's what you call as public speaking. But public speaking is an, is an ancient art. You know, it's a, you might have heard about these Greek philosophers and, and these legends who used to speak well on stage. Martin Luther King, Winston Churchill, Sir Winston Churchill. 
we have seen uh, so many world leaders who have been exceptional public speakers. But you think about this for a moment. Teaching is a form of public speaking. Teaching is a subset of public speaking. You agree that? Now consider this. Public speaking is a form of a theater. It's a form of a drama. You create suspense, you create mystery, you, you tell a story, you, you are out there, you are performing there. So in other words, public speaking is a form of a performance arts, like a theater, like a drama. Now, this is what I want to give a connection between teaching and public speaking. Now, coming back, the fear of public speaking, okay, can be because of either fear of audience or fear of the subject. Now, coming back. How can you develop confidence in teaching or how can you eliminate the fear of public speaking? It is by A, understanding the audience and B, mastering the subject. Understand the audience which you have dealt in the previous skill. It is about being empathetic. It's being able to answer those three questions. What the audience already know, what the audience wants to know and how they want to know the concept or the subject. So once you answer those things, understanding audience will be easy. So the one part, 50% is done. Second, how can you gain confidence in teaching is by mastering the subject, is being the master. It's, it's needless to say. Okay, if you're an authority in your area of interest, in your specialty, say if you're going to be the best cataract surgeon out there, it will be in, uh, a walk on the cake, a walk in the park. It will be like very easy for you to easily demonstrate, to teach how to do a cataract surgeon. Right. So mastering subject means it will take years and years of relentless practice, dedication to your art to become masters. So I'm again going to split into two questions. Mastering the subject means mastering the what, the content. You may be a great refractionist. You may be a great cataract surgeon. You may be a wonderful, wonderful, skilled surgeon, clinician. So you will know what to teach. The what, the content part of it. That is crucial because uh, only when you know what to teach, you can really make efforts on how to teach something. Okay, now you may be wondering, I'm not an expert. I'm not a subject expert. I'm not I'm not this authority in, 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 in my area of expertise. I'm, I'm a novice. I'm a beginner or I'm kind of there midway. But how can I appear as if I have mastered my subject. That is going to be our thing. That brings to pro tip number one. Don't, trust, don't just read books. Don't go back there and don't just open up your books and start reading. But try to watch how others are teaching. Let me show you one example. This is one topic called optic nerve head changes in glaucoma. You can see that there are different topics different varieties, including my one of my lectures. There are many such lectures out there. Take time to watch them. You can see there's one lecture which has a mnemonic. You can see lectures of different types. You can even see shots or like short, easy to understand, easy to grasp, one minute, mini lectures. Now, all these things you have to watch to understand how someone else is teaching. This you might have been doing all these days, but my pro tip will be watch at a slightly higher speed. Watch at 1.5x. Quickly grasp and assimilate the concepts what they're trying to teach. So now once you know the topic, what your, you know, the teacher online has taught you, when you have this multiple examples, multiple real life demonstrations of teaching, you absorb them. Then now you'll have an idea that you have kind of mastered the subject. It's very easy. So not just books, go for these online lectures also. Clear? Right. So now coming back to second aspect of it, how to deliver something. Now you have mastered the subject, or at least you have taken efforts to master the content part of it, but how do you going to deliver this? This itself is a whole new topic, but I'm going to quickly give you one tip. See, the reason why I'm, I've mentioned here is lack of confidence in teaching stems from fear of public speaking. So why is there a fear of public speaking? Think practically. One important reason why we all have fear of public speaking is that we will tend to forget what to say. In that big group of audience, we sweat. We have this adrenaline rush. Our mind goes blank. Throats get dry. 
butterflies in our stomach. So I know it's very difficult for a, for a teacher to be a public speaker on stage. It's and and it's not fair to expect a teach you know a doctor or a, or a healthcare professional to be a public speaker. Both are different domains, right? Also, it is important to know how to deliver something. Because I've seen masters, I've seen expert surgeons who are so good at what they're doing, but they cannot communicate their ideas effectively across a group of audience, which is an equally important skill in today's scenario. So how do you master a subject or how to appear as if you have master subject is when you know what to speak. So going back to pro tip number two is use presenter notes. It's a very simple way to appear confident on stage. Even though you might have forgotten everything what you have said, the cool way is to put your content, put your script into this particular column, into this particular box called as presenter notes. You can see in this picture, there is one particular slide which I have designed for one of my lectures. And this is my slide. In this slide, you can see that there is a there is a slide and the content has been converted into a text which I've put into the presenter notes. So when I'm going to project this to my audience, okay, the audience will see only this slide. Okay, but I'll be able to access both the picture as well as the content or the script for that particular slide. So it appears as if I don't read directly from the slides. I will look more polished, I look more professional and I will sound smart. So, so far we've covered two skills of the three. The skill number one is empathy. Skill number two is confidence. So what is the skill number three? The third skill is going to be storytelling. Uh, probably the most difficult of the other skills. Yet the most practical skill to develop is going to be the skill of storytelling. Because uh, confidence and empathy, they're kind of abstract. They're kind of complex, but we have tried our best to make them actionable. But storytelling is, is an actual uh, skill. It's, it's, it's a very much workable, soft skill. So before I jump into how can we involve storytelling into our teaching, let me introduce this gentleman, the legendary Greek philosopher Aristotle, who gave the brilliant three elements of oratory. What are the three pillars of public speaking? Ethos, logos, and pathos. Ethos means credibility. Who is speaking? What is the credentials of the speaker? Logos is logical argument, the rationality you put forward. So as medical educators, we are always obsessed with the ethos and the logos. But what is underrated, what is not being focused much is going to be the pathos. Pathos means the emotions. Understanding and addressing the emotional quotient of the audience is very important, much, much more important than ethos and logos. By telling vividly engaging stories to our audience, we appeal to the pathos element of the audience. Therefore, we transmit the information in a much, much more memorable way. The one fortunate thing is that the storytelling is inbuilt in our medical teaching through history. History has an integrated story built into it. When I'm going to say that a six-year-old uh, boy came with complaints of painless or non defective vision, and if I'm going to show this boy, then everybody comes to the edge of their seats. They're all trying, okay, what's the story? Why this child became blind? And all our eyes, all the, and all our, our eyes are focused on this child. So that's what the power story brings in. So always introduce case histories into your lectures as much as possible. The second way where you can involve storytelling is by using metaphors. You don't really have to tell a big story like once upon a time they live someone, but you can use metaphors or similes where you connect the known to the unknown. Consider this in this lecture, in one of my lectures where I teach students on optic uh, disc, optic nerve head disc changes in glaucoma. I compare the optic disc to an egg. It's very much looks like an egg, right? The idea is to be very creative. So always take some time to reflect on the material that you have read from the book. Close your book. Think in what way can I creatively make the uh, you know the information memorable for my audience. Try to see if you can find a connection, okay, uh, which will make the audience understand, like a sport, like a movie. 
and speaking of movies i said teaching is a subset of public speaking and public speaking is a form of a performance arts so think that you are like a movie director you are directing a movie and you have a hero and a villain in your subject introduce the protagonist introduce the antagonist very very important secret of many successful teachers think like a movie director who is the hero who is the villain the villain can be a bug it can be a pathogen it can be a disease and the hero will be a drug will be the treatment right so know who the hero is and know who the villain is you are set to go so my dear friends to summarize i have discussed about the three important skills the skill set which you have to develop for a good public speaker slash teacher skill number 1 is empathy always understand what the audience already know what they want to know and how they want to know second is develop confidence on stage develop confidence in the content or subject by watching lectures the others have given at a higher speed and always develop confidence in the delivery okay by by appearing smarter on stage by using presenter notes and one more way where you can become a master of delivery is by incorporating stories into your teaching so all these three are connected when you know the audience when you have the confidence to talk and when you can give attack appeal the emotions of the audience you are a public speaker thank you so much for the patient listening see you again bye